Hello and welcome to News Hour from the BBC World Service, coming to you live from London. I'm James Kamarasamy. We begin today in northeastern Italy, where 13 people are now known to have died in the region of Emilia Romagna after six months' worth of rain fell in just a couple of days. 20 rivers have burst their banks, nearly 300 landslides have been recorded. The area has experienced serious flooding before, most recently just two years ago, but this is on a different scale. Michele De Pascali is the mayor of Ravenna, a city close to the Adriatic coast. It's one of the places in the region worst hit by the flooding. And he told NewsHour about the impact the waters have had. The flood that hit my city and uh, my region, especially Romagna, has been like someone pointed the perfect storm. And the facts have been catastrophic. Many people have lost their homes, their possession, some on their life. We have uh, in the town of Ravenna 25,000 people out of home. Well, among the people who have had to leave their homes further inland are Nicolo Santoro's parents-in-law. He was clearing out their house in the town of Botteghino di Zocca, just south of the regional capital Bologna, when we got through to him. I'm uh, currently in the countryside of Bologna. We are here uh, taking care of the house of my father's-in-law, which yesterday got covered at the first floor with the uh, water and, uh, and mud uh, like we had never seen before. It happened two years ago that uh, we had the same problem, but it was not that much water at the end as this time. So in that period, we decided to take the care of the cleanance and the maintenance of the river in front of the house at our own uh, cost, obviously, because uh, no one here is taking care of the cleanness of the rivers anymore. Uh, here in Italy, we have a big problem on, on that side. So, And uh, we raised the embankment by four meters, uh, but yesterday it was not enough. We found ourselves with uh, one meter and a half of mud and water inside the house at the first floor. What is the scene like now? Can you perhaps describe it? When we arrived uh, yesterday, everything was floating around because there was still water inside the house was still like one meter and when the water left there was 40 centimeter of uh, of mud and it was so difficult to walk around even now we are trying to clean everything uh, i really need to to thank a, a lot of people in the neighborhood which are really helping us a lot in this moment but no one of from the state or uh, the region is coming here to help us so i really really want to thank these people who are helping us and you say that you had to yourselves build up the embankment to try and put some protection in following the yep. the recent the most recent floods yeah but we just cleaned uh, like 100 meters of of the river in front of the house but uh, the problem is uh, is much bigger we need to to take care of the rivers why did you have to do it yourselves because no one came here to ask us uh, <laughs> if uh, we needed hand to clean that or, or on the mountains of the river. What is the damage like? How, how much uh, can you save? Like, yeah, probably nothing on the first floor since uh, the mud was uh, was everywhere. Uh, in every door we opened, we found uh, everything floating and uh, TVs, electronics, it's all gone and uh, furniture, etc. Really crazy. And what about insurance, flood insurance? Unfortunately, this time we had that, uh, not like the two years ago. And uh, we will try to, to get something back, but uh, we don't actually know what is, covered, uh, what is covered and what is not. So you learned a lot from what happened two years ago, but you're saying the authorities didn't? Not actually, not at all. And your parents-in-law, they, are, they got out in time, you got them out? Yeah, they came yesterday to to our house because uh, we we saw the danger coming and uh, with five dogs, two cats, they had to move yesterday. And they, it's not uh, an easy moment for them to arrive at a level where they get crazy seeing their things get destroyed. And uh, really, we are here to help them, but uh, it's really hard. 
you say the authorities haven't really helped out until now, but what are you expecting them to do? I mean, uh, we still have not seen no one from the authorities here. I think uh, they are all occupied in a bigger center, like city or uh, Riviera. Uh, no one came here. You can hear the machines, but the machines are from people in the neighborhood uh, we who had that and uh, they are really helping us in this moment because no one uh, no one from the state came here so that's just local farmers helping out yeah and how long do you anticipate this clear up effort will take uh, we are taking away the the bigger part uh, but uh, we still need to clean all the uh, all the house uh, inside uh, dry everything and see what we can recover and what uh, has to be thrown away. You're probably not reflecting too much on the causes of this, but do you think the fact you've had these two extreme weather events in just a couple of years and so much damage is directly related to climate change? It probably can be. Uh, also, two weeks ago, we had a uh, big rainfall with the river coming out, so the... The floor was probably already saturated and uh, yeah, all this period of uh, dry and big rainfalls, uh, those extremes uh, could obviously be referred to, to climate change. Given that, what do you think of the way the authorities have reacted? As I told you, no one came here, so I know they have a lot of work now. But uh, really, no one can hear asking if we need the help. Well, look, Nicolo, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us and uh, best of luck uh, with all the clear-up. Thank clear you, up. Jamie. All I right. go back to work. Back to work. Uh, Nicolo Santoro speaking to me from his uh, in-law's house in the town of Botteghino di Zocca, just uh, south of Bologna. And we'll be putting uh, that criticism to the party that runs the region, Emilia-Romagna, later in the programme.